Hello, this is Mr. Warwick. I'm here to talk to you about lesson 12-8. This will be the eighth and final lesson from chapter 12, which has been over surface area and volume 3D solids. Um, what we're going to talk about today is congruent and similar solid shapes. <clears throat> so uh, what we're dealing with here is <clears throat> either we have two of them that are exactly the same, like two tennis balls or two ice cream cones or something like that, um, they're made the exact same way, so they are the exact same size. Or we're talking about similarity again. If you remember back when we were doing two-dimensional shapes and similarity, this rectangle is similar to this rectangle because the ratio of sides is the same. Um, just like when we were talking about similarity and um, all squares and all circles are by their very nature similar, um, all cubes and all spheres are by their very nature similar. You have to be more careful when it comes to three-dimensional solids. It's a lot like rectangles. You can have a bunch of different rectangles. Not all of them are going to be similar uh, in shape and measurement. So I've got a couple of different cylinders here. <clears throat> and even though they are both cylinders, there's no way that these two could be similar. This one, the uh, radius would be very small. The height would be very large. This one, the radius would be very large. The height would be very small. And there's just too much difference between them to do similarity. But on these two, where it's a rectangular prism, um, you can kind of see what's going on here where they would be similar. It's just the ratio of the side values is uh, different. Remember, the ratio of the corresponding values, you have to have more than one side, and the ratio of those corresponding measures has to stay equal across it. Otherwise, they are not going to be similar. Um, when you talk about congruent solids, again, it has to be the same size and the exact same shape. So they're both triangular based pyramids and they both have bases that are this large and they both have the same height. So it has to be equal, um, not just close, but, but equal all the way across. 12.1, um, make sure you add that one to your notes. Um, it's actually on uh, page 896. Page 897, 12.1, it's talking about similar solids and it gives you the ratios. So if my scale factor between my similar solids, this one to this one, is A to B, we can say uh, this side here would be two and this side would be eight. Um, and if all of the rest of them hold that same one to four ratio, then the surface area is gonna be A squared times B squared. So if my scale factor is one to four, then my surface area is actually going to be 1 to 16 because 1 squared is 1, 4 squared is 16, and then my volume is going to be 1 because 1 cubed is 1, and then 4 squared is going to be 64. Okay, the example they give in the book might be a little bit better for something like this because of the numbers, but it's a 2 to 3 ratio, sorry, 2 to 3 ratio, 2 squared would be 4, 3 squared would be 9, 2 cubed would be 8, and three cubed would be 27. So uh, again, make sure you write that down, make sure you understand that. Most of the more complex problems that you'll be dealing with when you work this lesson are going to be along the lines of, they give you the volume, they tell you that they are similar, and then you'll have to work backwards to find the scale factor of one side to another. So make sure you understand that. Make sure you understand on the calculator how to uh, locate and find the cube root um, if you have one of the TI-84s, it's in the math menu and there's a, there's a cube root. But if you're dealing with the inspires, it's a lot quicker to use the, the X root that's above the raised to the, um, I can, it's over on the far left hand side. <clears throat> and it's, it's fairly simple to operate once you understand it, it's editable. Uh, you can go back and you can insert the answer from the previous question on it, just like you can uh, when you're dealing with the TI-84, so uh, understand that. Don't don't take shortcuts. Don't you know type it with just one decimal place. Have it put in the full answer from the previous problem, and it'll help work out the problems much more accurately. Um, other than that, the problems that you'll be working for this one, there's not a lot more information than that. So just be careful around it. The problems that you'll be working on uh, this lesson will be numbers six through, and we're going to get through some of these uh, higher order thinking ones, we'll go through 28, okay? 
So six through 28, I would like you to work those. This will be the last one that we work from chapter eight. We'll get into the reviews, we'll get into the test, or not chapter eight, sorry, chapter 12. And then we'll get into chapter 13 after that. If you have any questions, if something didn't make sense the way I explained it on here, make sure uh, ask your questions in class, come on into tutorial time. Um, remember, we will be reviewing some of the older subjects, so uh, keep a close eye on those videos for that, and we'll see you in class.